Maya. Chaksulandalitam yena tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam yena Bhutalai. Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam. Namaha Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Varvani Pucchari De Nirvishesha Sunya Vahari Paschat Yare Satarane Vansha Kalpa Dhru Vizcha Kripa Sindhu Pae Vicha Ditanam Bhagane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Vaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Tenanda Sri Advaita Kadar Har Sri Vansati Gora Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So uh, this is the third and the series of three uh, Presentations on a 95 slide, 95 slideshow presentation, and how on how and why it is important today more than ever to read and study Shri Prabhupada's books. So we went through uh, <clears throat> the different generations. We speak to, spoke about some principles of. Uh, understanding deeper how to approach the books. What is the sequence that comes by way of re reading the books, such as reading, understanding, applying, realizing, and developing skills and values. Uh, we also talked about, uh, we also demonstrated some of Srila Prabhupada's quotes uh, to understand deeper in an analytic way what he is saying in a particular statement. Um, and of course, we mentioned those categories, mood and mission, theological application, preaching application, like that. So we're going to, this third part is a little bit more technical and a little bit more deeper. So it requires a little bit more attention and thought. So this is where we left off with slide number 68. It says theolo theological application. So we have here Srila Prabhupada speaking with men of the men of the collar priests and people who are connected with religion here so uh, to help or to bridge a gap between different theological uh, understandings of the relationship with our practice and the connection it has with the Supreme Lord. And of course, theolo theology means to know a little bit about other theological issues outside of ours. So here we have to help create learned Vaishnava Theologians, theological, the, theologians who are expert in assisting the society through application of Shastric knowledge to a wide range of personal, social, moral, topical, and theological issues. So this spans a, a uh, wide range how theology, how our theology, as given by the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition and has presented, been presented to us by Srila Prabhupada through his books and through his lectures and other forms of media, 
uh, can be understood and used in these different areas. Our personal understanding, the social and moral and religious values that our theology is made of, and the practice, the, the practice and how these theological principles are uh, focused on or emphasized in our practice. Okay, the next slide. Here, so this, this comes to you. What are some theological issues? Can you name some that might need clarification? So I throw that out to the audience, the Broad Assembly of Vaishnavas. What are some of the theological issues that are part of our society? Yeah, I think so much. Okay, we got two people that once came on. Who was that? Uh -huh. Mataji, go ahead. No, Tanya. please go ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Lord. Hare Lord. Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances to you, Maharaj. Usually, theological means um, related to the existence of God. Is that correct? Right. And the philosophy that help that we practice in order to realize the existence of God mm. is the application so, of, the, of the principles. Yes. Mm. The first um, thing that came to my mind was um, Srila Prabhupada's refutation of Mayavad philosophy, because that's very prevalent uh, in the society outside. Um, uh, most of them either do not believe um, in the existence of God or even if some people like to believe uh, that there is something higher, they do not believe in the existence of a personal God. Yeah, and yeah, that's a theological issue, obviously, a very strong one. How was that played out in, in Prabhupada's personal life? What did he do to make that point you just made an emphasis? Uh, throughout his purports and also throughout his lectures, we find that um, he, he emphasized um, that one should not think that we are God. We are parts and parcels of God. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, right. Continue. Um, so there are many um, yoga studios and yogis and um, even philosophers and um, professors who say that um, the goal of life is to become God. But um, Srila Prabhupada um, and also the great Vaishnava Acharyas in our line made, it, made a very clear distinction between um, a living entity and God. Um, we are parts and parcels of God, but we can never become God. Um, so that's, that's what I understood. Yeah, the theological explanation is that although we are of the same quality, we are spirit, God is also spirit. It's like a drop of water to the ocean. It's like a gold ring to the gold mine. Hmm. The quality, at least to a certain level of quantity, is similar. Is the same, not similar. But the, uh, the, the, qu the quantity is within complete or perfect or absolute in the source of spirit, which is Krishna or the absolute truth. Yeah, good. Uh, again, I'm going to ask the general body of devotees, what did Prabhupada do to really emphasize this point 
that we every day recite a particular mantra that really brings this point foremost. I'm giving you more and more easier to understand. What to recite every day that gives us this clarity of what you mentioned in terms of the personality over the impersonal. Maharaj, I was thinking of Srila Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashat Yadeshitarini. That's it. That's it. Prabhupada made it clear. Yeah. He took on that mantra prior, prior, before taking on that mantra. He took on that mantra in 1970, before we had the first part of the mantra, Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya. Uttale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namali. In 1970, there arose a controversy within this con wherein uh, people were saying that, although Prabhupada is not saying it himself, he is Vishnu incarnate. And then a big discussion, actually a fight ensued, uh, a verbal fight, very strong verbal fight. It came in, it started in New Vrindavan. <laughs> And then uh, the word got back to Prabhupada, who was in Japan at the time. And he, uh, he became very concerned. He did something to smash the whole controversy. He, he removed those people from the society who were actually sannyasis and told them to go out and preach and not stay anywhere in our temples, but just preach Krishna consciousness and stay always on the move. But at the same time, in order to make the point clear about his identity, uh, Namaste Saraswati Deve, and he is actually yeah, a disciple, follower of Saraswati, Saraswate, which refers to Bhakti Santata, Bhakti Siddhanta, Gauravani Pracharine that he's brought the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to the Western world, near Vishesha Sunyavadi, as you mentioned, in order to uh, destroy, to, uh, what we say, remove the ignorance of near Vishesha and Sunyavadi. Near Vishesha means uh, impersonalism, Sunyavadi means voidism. So that's the philosophy of generally of the Buddhists and the Mayavadis. So that's, that was adopted by Srila Prabhupada during this controversy that happened. Okay, uh, Sri Devi, you wanted to mention something that, that you uh, think is a theological issue? Um. Actually, um, Lavanya, I mean, um, Dila Manjuri said it really beautifully. I would just add that uh, Srila Prabhupada was so insistent that uh, Krishna is a person. Krishna is a person and uh, defeated the Mayavadis by always reminding us that, you know, we have a loving relationship with a very personal God. And mm -hmm. he gave us that straight, you know, the straight philosophy to help us understand our real relationship. And I think that's the thing, is, that is the victory of ISKCON that we have established, you know, that Krishna is a person and we need to develop a loving relationship with Krishna. Can you give a, uh, a sloka that would kind of illustrate the sloka from the scriptures that will illustrate this? Krishna is a person? Um, which either directly or indirectly through the, through the verse will make that point. <laughs> um. Let's see, let's see what's, uh, okay. We'll come to that. Actually, that's a later slide. Okay, just think about it for a minute. 
Okay, thank you. Someone want to read this particular uh, slide here? Oops, I'll go back up here. We need a reader for this one. The Bhagavad Gita is spoken by the Lord so that human society can be perfectly organized from all angles of vision, politically, socially, economic, economically, philosophically, and religiously. From any point of view, human society can be reformed by the Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. So here's where Krishna consciousness goes beyond just the theological. It goes into realms of all other aspects of life where we can organize every part of society based on what is moral and religious principles that are mentioned to uh, set up the ideal political, social, economical, physical, philosophical, and religious uh, society, points of view within the society. So we're not simply a, uh, you know, a churchianity movement. We go to the church, we pray, and that's it. It's about reformation of the whole society on all levels. Like that. And in, by studying Srila Prabhupada's books, or at least reading them regularly, you'll see Prabhupada spoke about all these different categories of society. Spoke a lot about the political, much more about the social, some about the economical, not a great amount on the, on both on the, on the philosophical and the religious. So where we can apply those ideal principles that are the foundation for the execution of Krishna consciousness with the with the focus on these different categories. So yeah, we have everything. Well, let me ask you, what would be the economical aspect of our our philosophy? Well, that's the individual principle. Yeah, good. But as far as a program, what would be our program? The farms? Yes, farms. Very good. Van Ashram or farm communities. Very good. Economically. What would be uh, what would be the social? I think I just mentioned it, Van Ashram Dharma is the social arrangement of society. Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Sudras, and within the context of devotional service. Politically, what would be our our uh, vision? That we have Raj Rishis, godly leaders, saintly leaders, noble leaders who know how to take and, care of citizens. Yeah, exactly. Or at least Brahmins who are in advisory capacity to give direction to the political rule within the society not taking part so much in the politics directly, but becoming the uh, guide for those who are in those positions, the Kshatriyas, in order for them to rule according to, as you say, religious principles. Mm -hmm. If we can get Rajarsis in those positions, then that would be ideal, but Prabhupada didn't want us to get directly involved in politics when he said we're not interested in positions, we're interested in just bringing about a change within society that will foster spiritual, moral, and uh, religious values. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada's vision was, was broad. 
Okay, so we'll go on. Okay, who knows where this is? If you don't, you really, really need to do some work. <laughs> who knows where this is? It's an easy one. What temple is this? Come on, some of you are out there, out there, visit this temple, come on. Is it Bhaktivedanta Manor? Yes. It is Bhaktivedanta Manor. Thank you, Shilpa. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys got this one wrong, then I don't know where, what I would say. <laughs> Bhaktivedanta Manor, and Srila Prabhupada, 1977 when he came. Okay, and now we're going into evaluation a little bit. Okay, now the what two pictures do you see there? We are still in Albert Einstein. Okay, so you have the sage there. We can say it's Vyas today, speaking from scriptures, and then we have um, our illustrious uh, Albert Einstein, who was a great believer in God. Um, so evaluation from the scientific point of view, evaluation from the spiritual point of view. Teachers who are well-versed in the, the, uh, the uh, philosophy of a particular science. So here, these both of these people are, according to the statement, read the statement, someone. Help, Help you. Don. <laughs> help you develop analytical, interpretative, and evaluative skills, particularly in respect to the practical application of Shastric knowledge. So part of reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books means to develop the ability to analyze, to interpret, to evaluate. Evaluate means in relationship to uh, various skills and and values also because the word evaluate also has the word value with respect to the application of shastric knowledge okay so next slide here's another what do you see here first someone read the uh, the wording We have any counselors, advisors out there in the devotee community? Our mentors, Maharaj? Um, yeah, mentors and counselors, right? Um, shall I read, Maharaj? Please. The ability to give advice, counsel, etc., that is actually relevant and practically useful to society. And develop the ability to make appropriate choice in your personal life. So, giving counsel advice to others, which is regular, relevant, and useful to the society in general, to people in particular, and also to be able to make appropriate choices in your personal life. So all this centers around uh, Srila Prabhupada's books because you'll find all this information through his books and through his, uh, his uh, writing, his, uh, his, his lectures. Okay, so here's something we need to evaluate. Here's something 
So someone can read this. Although Krishna advised Arjuna kill him, Arjuna did not take it. This is consciousness. Even though there is duty, we have to see what will be the effect of the duty. Nothing should be done blindly. This is the nature of a devotee. This the is body the is thoughtful. Yeah, the body is thoughtful. And he's seeing that this Arjuna was encouraged to, to kill by Krishna. But he was thinking, um, well, he had reasons why not to. So Prabhupada is using this as an example to understand that when we make decisions, we should understand what we are making decisions based on, what are the dynamics of that decision, and um, what will be the results. Of course, sometimes we cannot perfectly see the, the complete results. We should have some understanding based on experience and based on hearing from others. What would be an example in our own life? Something you're faced with and then you have to decide whether to do it or not. And what would be those, what would be the ingredients that will make up that decision? We can even use material examples. What would be in a material example, especially for those in family life? Hi, Krishna. Maharaj, I think um, it's a difficult choice for many devotees whether they should get married or not. Um, also, it's a difficult um, decision to make whom to get married to. Good, good. That's that's not what I was thinking about, but that also is, applies to, to this program. I was thinking about after marriage, should we have children or should we not have children? And if we do, how will we be able to support them? What will be the means of that support? Is the th everything in place in order to be ready to take on the responsibility? Whether I should get married or not, that's also, that's a, that's a main question for some, especially for the male devotees. Do I want to remain brahmachari or should I uh, move into the grihasta ashram? Um, so, yeah. So, therefore, one should, what we say, understand clearly, at least based on guru, shadow, and shastra before making, especially a decision that has a, 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 what we say, a major part of our life, something like getting married or what ashram should I be in or um, should I go out and travel and preach or should I stay in the temple and w work within the local area? Like that. In other words, a devotee is thoughtful He gets the instructions and then he thinks about how to execute it. Where in the scriptures now, I'm going to give you a really tough question to see who knows the answer to this one. Where in the scripture is this illustrated, aside from this verse that's been mentioned here? Here's a lecture, but there's a place in the Shastras that Prabhupada makes this point really clear. Who knows that verse? It's a very key verse. We also talked about it in our previous discussions these last two days. Tough question. Where does it say nothing should be done blindly? That's the point I'm trying to make. Where does it say no blind followers? Hmm. 
Who has a Bhagavad Gita in front of them? Anybody? Anybody have a Gita? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, go to uh, the chapter number four, verse number 34, 434, and read into the purport until you come to that point. I think it's towards the later part of the purport. So you want us to read from the beginning, Guru Maharaj? No, no. Find that line okay. that talks about what we're speaking here. This was both line for line and that's it. Yeah, yes, the Guru Maharaj, yeah. yeah. Uh, one must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master, and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and uh, absurd inquiries are condemned. Not only one, not only should one hear submissively uh, from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission and service and inquiries. Yeah. Clear, clear, clear understanding, and so one can move forward nicely on the path. Mm -hmm. Okay, no blind following, no absurd in inquiries. <laughs> That's also Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Can I ask a question for clarification? Is it an absurd inquiry or is it? <laughs> it's, exactly the, it's exactly the absurd inquiry. Okay. What's an example of an absurd inquiry? Maybe mine is, Guru Maharaj. What's an example of an absurd inquiry? Do I have to chant my rounds? <laughs> oh, I see. No, a third inquiry would be maybe a little bit better was uh, uh, something that's not at all related to the absurd inquiry. Um, Maharaj, actually, we were listening to Prabhupada recently, and one of the devotees asked, what is the relationship between Balaram and Radha? And Prabhupada immediately corrected him, and uh, he said, you should not ask such questions. I mean, it's a, it's a valid question, but at the same time, it's not related to class, and you should not ask these things in public because they will not be able to understand. Yeah, that's... That's an inquiry which is not relevant and not necessary. Mm -hmm. Good. Manjuali, what did you say? Okay, so we'll move on here. Who knows where that is? Krishna Maharaj, is that also the manner? Um, it's London. Oh, Soho. Um, I think it's very place in London. Very place, yes, yeah, sorry. Very place. <laughs> it's in the old days. Very nice kid on there. Yeah. Okay. Moon and mission. Understanding and appreciating the moon and mission of Srila Prabhupada and perpetuating that understanding within the ISKCON societies and his members. Understanding of Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission gives a clear sense of identity and purpose within the society and a balanced sense of one's place within ISKCON. So you see five pictures there. 
So can you describe each one of the pictures in terms of what the, the mission and the mood? Someone want to take on? The first one is the book distribution, Maharaj. Okay, do you see the book distribution being there? That's part of our mission. Food for life. Food, food distribution, yeah. Food distribution, prashadam distribution. Harinam. Harinam, yeah. Uh, deity worship. Worshipping the, the, the form of the Lord in the temples. Deity worship. Uh, and cow protection, cow care. Yeah. Yeah, cow protection, farm communities. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, very five major points of our mission. And you can see our mission is to train, to educate, and to uh, what we say, perform charitable works in the form of Harinam and book distribution and food distribution. Okay. So. Here you go. This is a little bit of a, if you want to tackle this, we welcome you. So someone can read the first one. There's three statements. Explain how a verse or statement relates to and for reflection of Prabhupada's mood and mission. Okay. Explain how Sri Prabhupada's translations and purports give insight into his mission and the mission of ISKCON. Evaluate Sri Prabhupada's conduct and his attitude towards practice, rules and regulations, etc. in the light of traditional Gaudiya Vaishnava theology. You want to tackle any one of those three? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll try the second one. Um, okay. I think trans. I think Sri Prabhupada's um, translation and purports were given in his scriptures in the books that he gave us, um, and I think that's our Bible really to understand the. Okay. Mission. We want to give. You want to give a little explanation of the, of uh, the in, and give insight into this mission and mood with you, which are in the translations and purports. That means you have to be a little bit more specific you know, and kind of like finding a, a particular purport or translation and either paraphrasing it or quoting it, either one. <coughs> so is that to actually um, take a purple and then you have to um, see what Prabhupada's um, idea was behind that purport. Is that what you're saying, Maharaj? Yeah, it says these translation purports, they give insight into his mission and the mission of ISKCON. What is, a, what is our mission in ISKCON? What is the ultimate mission of ISKCON? Is to spread the holy name? Uh, yeah, but what's the, what's the ultimate goal? What is our goal of our, our society? Become Krishna conscious. To make everybody Krishna conscious, that's right. Is it to chant in every town and city? Well, that's, that's the result. But to make everybody Krishna conscious, make everybody connected with God in devotional, in devotional service. So you find in Prabhupada's purports and translations, he speaks about, you know, the importance of propagating the Hare Krishna mission. Uh, I'll give, give you an example in the sixth canto, third chapter, verse number 
24 or 25, I'm not sure why. Prabhupada talks about the installation of Krishna Balaram, the opening of the temple in Vrindavan, and how um, he would have been happy to simply perform the ceremony for the opening of the temple by just doing Harinam Kirtan. But because he was in Vrindavan, and because he was surrounded by many of the Brahmins who were caste Brahmins and various types of uh, priests and others, if he did that, he felt his mission, his, his position or his, uh, his society would not be accepted within the Vrindavan uh, area. So he went through all the rituals of installation, doing the whole Agni Hotra ceremony, chanting the mantras like that. But he said, you know, our really our mission, and he wanted to show that through Harinam Sankirtan. This is our mission to spread the holy name everywhere. Okay. Uh, how about the third one? Anyone want to tackle the third one? It's that about Vaishnav etiquette. Um, do Prabhupada give us the manual for Vaishnav etiquette about rules and regulations, how to behave in this Gaudiya Vaishnava mission? Okay, but it says evaluate his conduct towards these practices. So what, what, was about, what was about his conduct that illustrated these practices? Mm -hmm. Maharaj, I was uh, thinking about um, him giving um, uh, initiations to women. Okay. Um, and I was thinking that, you know, traditionally, um, like, uh, women were not given um, um, second initiation um, mm -hmm. in Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. But even in any other tradition, women were not allowed to worship the deities uh, on the altars, like in temples. I mean, they could do it privately. Um, so um, he, uh, uh, he took something that was extremely traditional and he was able to um, bring it in the context of modern times. Um, Yeah, excellent, excellent example. It's an excellent example how he allowed women to to be in the same status as their uh, fellow god brothers in performing all the activities in devotional service. Where traditionally, according to Gauri and Vaishnav theology and tradition that wasn't done. Although women were allowed, it wasn't done within the context of ashram or temple, it was done separately. Yeah, very good. That was, that was an excellent example. Okay, we'll move on. Thank you for that. Anyone want to try these? Someone can read? Arch in the city? Yes, Gurudev. Uh, identify the main principles upon which Srila Prabhupada's mission is built and relate these to corresponding scriptural references. Apply Shastra to compare and contrast attitudes and behavior worthy of members of ISKCON and those which are inappropriate. Identify how Srila Prabhupada's personal qualities relate to scripture. Uh, determine the role that Srila Prabhupada's books play in furthering his mission and in enriching the lives of his followers. You want to tackle any one of these? The third one, identify how Srila Prabhupada's personal qualities relate to scriptures. 
Okay. Do you see? And what do you know about his qualities that relate to the scripture? Um, total surrender to his mission, um, to Krishna, to his uh, uh, gu gurus, um, and uh, tolerance. A little louder, a little louder, please. Sorry. So, uh, tolerance, uh, humility, and surrender to uh, his the, the mission he wanted to uh, uh, the uh, is gone to work on uh, total surrender to uh, his uh, gurus um, and uh, he he has always uh, behaved in the way he has always preached he's he's not the one who preached something and did something else good yeah Yeah, that's all for a moment. Mm. Prabhupada also followed everything perfectly. He also chanted his rounds. He also attended when he could the temple functions. He uh, performed a lot of personal sacrifice in order to spread the movement. In other words, he was very austere. So one of the main principles by which Prabhupada's mission is built Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, I was looking at Srimad Bhagavatam 7.9.5. And in there, in the translation, the purpose, it says, When Lord Narasimha Dev appeared, all the devotees became fearless. The devotee's hope of becoming fearless <clears throat> is to chant the holy name of Lord Narasimha Dev. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I thought this would relate to one of the main fundamental principles. Is to become chant, fearless? Chant the holy name and through the chanting of the holy name become fearless. <coughs> and that, chanting the holy names for Harinam Sankirtan is one of the main principles he built his mission upon. Becoming fearless is the result of that. Service to the Vaishnavas, preaching to the conditioned souls. These are the things that he built his mission upon. And there's scriptural evidences to correspond with these principles. As Krishna says, one who serves, uh, one who becomes a servant of my devotee actually becomes my servant. Harinam, 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 Ebuke, Valamna. There's no other way, no other way, no other way than chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Um, many verses that also correspond with the principle of reaching out, principle of preaching. The last verse in Srimad Bhagavatam glorifies Harinam Sankirtan. Okay, number two is a little tough. Apply Shastra to compare and contrast attitudes and behavior worthy of members of this kind and those which are inappropriate. Maharaj, I was uh, thinking about following the four regulative principles. Um, and um, Many people outside, they think that it's appropriate to do all of those things and it is considered normal in life. 
um but um shila prabhat set the standard for devotees that they should not be leading a sinful life and just by following the four regulative principles that's um achieved along with chanting of the holy name yeah perfect and what are some of the things that are inappropriate that co contrast with proper behavior and attitudes i think it's um underlying in our philosophy that we are servants of krishna and we are not meant to exploit um others or mother earth for our um selfish needs so it's it's inbuilt in our uh, uh, it's one of the strong foundations of our philosophy that we are servants of um everyone yes. else yeah you can if you say i'm servant of god but i'm not or probably would say you know people say well you know i do good to humanity but what do you do for the animals you, you kill the animals but you open up hospitals and do all kinds of philanthropic work to help members of this society so that's 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 in contrast to the teachings not seeing the uh, completely that all the living all living entities and everybody is actually part and parcel of krishna and each has a due right to live according to the arrangement of the lord so inappropriate behavior would be kind of being marginal uh glorif or we might say well i love god but i don't i can't i'm envious of my neighbor I hate my neighbor. <laughs> that would be a contrast in attitude. And of course that would take uh the form of a certain behavior, a wrong behavior. Okay. So here this is from the fourth canto verse 28 verse 51 someone want to read this mm -hmm. In conclusion if a disciple is very serious to exec execute the mission of the spiritual master he immediately associates with the supreme personality of godhead by vani or vapu this is the only secret of success in seeing the supreme personality of godhead instead of being eager to see the lord in some bush of vrindavan while at the same time engaging in sense gratification if one instead sticks to the principle of following the words of the spiritual master uh, he will see the supreme lord without difficulty shrimad bhagavatam yes. Or twenty-eight, fifty-one uh, reports. You want to explain that a little? Uh, well, as I understood, uh, uh, the main point was that uh, 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 we should uh, very strictly uh, follow the um, the the instructions of the uh, the spiritual master, and uh, actually, this will uh, lead us to. to see uh, krishna personally and uh, not uh, being a sahaji or something like that yeah making up your own ways of trying to become krishna conscious or getting the darshan of the lord if one is serious they follow the mission of the spiritual master if they do it follows that one can immediately associate what the personality of god is through his words or even his personal association and this these prophets that this is all the only secret of success in seeing the personality of god and one follows these principles he will see the supreme lord without difficulty now we don't quite don't forget about all your concocted ideas just just follow strictly the principles. 
Nem jó, hogy mondtam. close your... Hey, Manjuali. A glajka se nafnem. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I try, I'm trying to mute Mataji, but she keeps coming back up as unmuted. I've just, yeah, just shut her off, close her off, yeah. I've just done that again, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. She's having an, she's doing something else on the side there, but not paying attention. Okay. Someone else want to read this one? Thank you so much. Academic and moral integrity. In studying and preaching the scripture, it is necessary that we have moral and academic integrity in the interpretation, evaluation, and application of Shastric knowledge. Read the caption. Action is integrity. Doing what is right, even when it is difficult. Okay, so we'll go on to that. Okay, next one here. There are two missions, not only to give protection to the devotees, but also to kill the demons. So the devotees of Krishna should be trained up both ways not only to give protection to the devotees, to give them encouragement, but if need be, they should be prepared to kill the demons. That is Vaishnavism. It is not cowardism. It is not cowardism. When need to be, Bhagavad Gita 1.6 uh, to 7, like July 11, 1973, London. Read those four points underneath. Okay, so number one, uh, ways this quote may be misused, two or three. Number two, evaluate the consequences of each misuses. Select the most likely consequence. What is Chila Prabhupada's real print point here, sorry. Okay, so go ahead and take, take all these four points. Um, Ways this quote can be misused. Um, not only to give the protection to devotees, but also to kill the demons. Okay, so. The so. Krishna should be trained up to both ways. I'm struggling, Maharaj. It's obvious. We don't go out and kill anybody. No. <laughs> That's not the idea. So someone will read this and think, oh, yeah, there's some demons. We should, we should kill them. So Guru Maharaj, we, uh, someone may want to think low of the materialistic people or behave very rude to them or uh, uh, you know, talk bad about their activities and try to hurt them. Well, that's that's another point. You're right, but that's what in this particular context, we're finding out ways that this statement can be misused. So Maharaj, if we're, yeah. Also, you you have a point there in the sense that simply to criticize the non devotees is. Uh, just deviates one from one's business in life. Hmm. So, it says there, they, we should be, if need be, they should be prepared to kill the demons. So specifically, I'll have to answer it unless somebody else wants to give it a try. Maharaj, is it a, a, a is it understanding of uh, be prepared to kill the demons is actually like a demonic mentality of uh, yourself as well as the devotees to kill that to give the protection saying that okay don't think in that demonic uh, nature so can we take that in that context kill the demons um uh, your voice is a little soft 
and a little distant. So I didn't catch all your words, but can you repeat yourself? I was just saying like, you know, when we say you should be prepared to kill the demons, that is the demoniac mentality coming up into, into you as yourself, as well as other devotees. So that to encourage to kill that demonic mentality, that way you are giving prepared to kill the demons when we say here. Well, that is another point, but, and it's also 100% correct. And it's a very interesting point and it's correct. But here, what is it being said? Because it's related to the first part of the statement. Srila Prabhupada said this in the context of the dacoits attacking the devotees and that we should be prepared to defend ourselves. It's not that Vaishnava just stands and says, okay, do whatever you like with me or, um, you know, the helpless people of the temple, that we should have trained Kshatriyas who are able to protect and defend the devotees nicely. So my understanding is that we should be prepared to... Um, be ready to kill the demons if they are coming to attack us or attack the temple like that. Yeah, in other words, we should be trained up in the art of fighting. And that's for a select group of devotees who are in the mood of the Kshatriya Ashram, the Kshatriya Varna. And if our temples are attacked, we should be ready to defend and protect the devotees, protect the deities, protect the temples. And at the same time, you know, if we have to fight, then we should be prepared. It's part of it's part of an ashram dharma to have a class of devotees who are like protectors, and that those protectors are trained in fighting. They, they know how to fight. They know how to protect. Not only in terms of the martial spirit, but they also know the principles behind it. They're not cowards. They're not aggressors. And we have a class of devotees who are, who are very, we have a a large group of devotees who are good fighters, who are trained fighters, but a lot of them are not being used within our society to do this work. Although in some places, like this, like where I am here in Slovenia, uh, the devotees regularly have martial art classes here. And uh, we have some really powerful devotees here in this temple. And nobody will come and attack this temple because the devotees are, you know, well equipped to take care of any kind of, you know, attack like that. So how many temples are like that? You know, so just like when we, I think when, when we first got attacked in, I can't remember, way back when Prabhupada was here, Prabhupada immediately, um, just like when we got attacked in New Vrindavan, I was there, that was in 1973 in June. Prabhupada set up a training uh, program to, to train devotees in the art of fighting right after that. When we were doing all kinds of military activities, not everyone, but a select group of devotees from the community came forward and took the training. And since that happened, and many times after that, you know, when our temples were attacked, and many times devotees were able to defend the temples and other devotees. So the misuse of this statement is that we should we, we are aggressors and we go out and kill demons. We don't, we don't, we are non-violent, but we are not foolish to allow other people to cause violence to us without any 
without any resistance on our part. Okay, here you go. Is everybody still with us here or are they getting tired? We are here, Maraj. Everybody's okay? Everybody yell out Haribo if you're okay. Haribo! 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 <laughs> okay. If you're not okay, then yell out. I'm oh. still Haribo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's examples of poor or dishonest use of scripture. Somebody read this one. Poor or dishonest use of scripture. Examples of poor or dishonest use of scripture. The tendency to quote only half a shloka uh, when the second half modifies or qualifies the first. The personality of God had replied, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation. But of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. Yeah. Uh, choosing, Choosing and quoting only verses, evidence that support our own opinion and neglecting others. Okay, don't read everything. No, no, no. No, just we want to take the first one again. Tendency to quote half the sloka without quoting the whole sloka and therefore finding that the end, by the half quote, we get a certain understanding and we quote the whole sloka we get the complete and correct understanding. What would be another example? Taking taking some uh, verse or any quotation within the scriptures. I, I just Remember that lately when, when we spoke about uh, this, uh, this story of Bali Maharaj, uh, if we only quote the part when uh, Shukracharya is speaking uh, in a materialistic uh, point of view, then uh, we may think that uh, uh, in, in those cases which uh, he, he listed, uh, we, can, uh, um, can, uh, we shouldn't follow our promise. Yeah, yeah, taking that, yeah, that's just taking part of the purport like that. Like that. Or let me see, what would be another one? Um, so, to, uh, Another verse or a statement, just like I use a little controversial statement. Uh, let's see. It's like it says, one should fast on the codice. So that's that's the statement. But then, as applied to the ISKCON society, the spiritual master gives a complete understanding. One can fast only from the grains and beans, and then one will follow the prescribed codice. So according to the Acharya, who applies the principle of Shastra, according to time, place, and candidate, like that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, anybody want to try any of the only ones choosing and quoting only verses, evidence that support our own opinion and neglecting others? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I, I just uh, remember that uh, there is sometimes a competition between uh, amongst uh, devotees that uh, whose service is superior. And sometimes the book distributor uh, devotees used to uh, shlokas uh, uh, and Prabhupada statements that um, that book distribution is the uh, the best service. Sometimes uh, Kirtan devotees used to uh, quote other shlokas about uh, singing the holy name is the is this uh, most is the highest service and like that. But then we have statements that. All services are absolute because they're meant to please the, um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so Prabhupada's statement that the devotee out distributing books and the devotee are cleaning the temple are equal because both are offering their service to the Supreme Lord in devotion. So within the mood and mission, superior or inferior, and within the, the context of the absolute principle of devotional service, we find that everything is equally un, uh, equally accepted in terms of service. What makes the difference is the, mo is the mood for what the service is offered. Just like fasting on a codice. So if someone is fasting on the codice and they see someone else who is not fasting on the codice or is not one is following really strictly the codice and someone else is eating on the codice that person who's fasting thinks well these people are in maya they should be fasting from everything on the codice then he's having a feast with his false ego so he's not really following the fast because his false ego is having a big feast Yeah, yeah, thinking one service is better than another. Of course, and then you find Prabhupada talking about well, preaching is the highest and best of all services. So you find statements regarding that too. Okay. Anybody want to tackle any of the other ones coming down the list there? Oops, we lost that slide. Anyone? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, it might be on the arguing and debating uh, largely or wholly on basis on emotional appeal. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes we, we tend to get a little bit elitist when we're talking about karmis. And so we, we differentiate ourselves and say, look, those are karmis and they will never attain God and, and so on. So there's a tendency. So maybe I'm maybe that's my fault, my downfall. There's a tendency to be a little bit elitist and dismissive of non-devotees. Whereas... You know, the purport I was thinking of, Guru Maharaj, was um, Srimad Bhagavatam 2746, where it says that even sinful people can obtain the love of God through a pure devotee. And that's what we're, um, that's what I was trying to relate to on this particular point, Guru Maharaj. Good, good. Very nice. That was a nice point, yeah. Using emotional appeal rather than scriptural evidence to make your points like that. There's different ways of entering into a discussion. And uh, that's a tactic in order to win, but it's, it's outside of the principles of bhakti. 
How about the last one, quoting a verse that doesn't actually explain what that we are discussing, or whose meaning is clear, unclear, and ambiguous. I don't have a verse, Guru Maharaj, on this one, but it, what about when we talk, when Prabhupada talks about Brahmins and qualifications of a Brahmin, um, would this be the one where, you know, even though you're maybe born as a Brahmin, doesn't necessarily mean that you're qualified to be a Brahmin. So again, um, or am I, am I off, off the mark here with quoting a verse? Uh, there are. Yeah, that has been a main point in discussion. The one who is born in a Brahmin family is automatically qualified as a Brahmin. So, but the point is that it's not by Janma, it's by karma activities. Okay, so we'll move on here. Somebody want to read this one? Somebody is misusing the word so ham aham brahmasmi and therefore I am the supreme, but that is not. These are Vedic words, but so ham does not mean I am God. So, hum means I am also the same quality. So yeah, the Maya bodies use this term soham. That uh, soham is I am God. I am that. I am that which we, I am God. But soham actually means according to the Shastras is I am the same quality as God. So that's a miss. Somebody is misusing the word soham aham brahmasami. Okay. Or another word is the absolute truth is nirguna. So nir means without and guna means quality. So the absolute truth is nirguna, which is mentioned in the Shastras. But the understanding is that nirguna means without material qualities and not but he has qualities that are not material. That's another example. Okay, who knows who that is? Come on. Shri Shri Radha Kokulananda. From Italy, right? Uh, from Bhaktivedanta Mana. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone read? We'll go a little quicker now. Responsibility for learning. We must take responsibility for our learning and develop healthy study habits. Developing a taste and appreciation for the study of Sri Prabhupada's books and understanding the relevance of Shastra within one's life will inspire us to study and study well. Keep going. Understanding how we learn and what we must do to facilitate our learning will assist us in developing the study skills necessary to learn. Understand how we learn what will facilitate that learning and then developing those skills in order to facilitate that. Take responsible for our learning habits, develop healthy, healthy 
study habits. That means every day, make it a point to read and study these books, okay? There you go. Do you know, anybody know these guys? Mm -hmm. That's us, spiritual. That's us, <laughs> 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 Okay, these guys are way ahead of us. Yeah. Here we go. This quote we read earlier at the beginning, but it's mentioned again. All the devotees connected with this Krishna consciousness movement must read all the books that has that have been translated, Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Bhagavad Gita, and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from the position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal, blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Chaitanya Charita Amrita Mati Leela 25. 278. 278. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. This was quoted earlier in the in the presentation. Uh, so Prabhupada wants to make this this is actually a verse. Mm -hmm. um, in my daily life. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then we will lose, our intelligence will remain uninspired. We will simply look to the bodily activities of life and lose the chance for eternal blissful life. Okay. So this is what we went through. Someone read the list. Knowledge knowledge and understanding personal application preaching application faith and conviction prabhupad's mood and mission evaluation academic and moral integrity this is a, this this is a summation slide of the different points that were presented throughout this and the last one is responsibility for learning I mean, yes, responsibility for learning. We have a position as a devotee. We are responsible to learn and to make this also. Shastra Dakshu's realization. Yeah. And here we have Krishna Balaram from Vrindavan. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. There's a couple more slides which will because it's late, uh, we will we will uh, forego these slides. Okay, so thank you very much for your participation. I hope this presentation, those of you who were here for the whole three days, will uh, find it inspiring to understand that what we are talking about in terms of reading is more or less summed up in this one verse where we did a summation right here. What is our knowledge of the philosophy? What is our understanding? How can we apply? What is the knowledge that we can apply in our preaching? What faith and conviction we can develop through reading Prabhupada's books? What we can understand as far as Prabhupada's mood and mission? How to evaluate uh, different situations that come up in our practice of Krishna consciousness, keeping uh, the, the philosophy intact and the moral principles intact in our execution of devotional service. These are all features of knowledge that are given to us through Prabhupada's books, his lectures, his conversations, his letters, his personal instructions. Okay.
So we're, we're turning the ocean of nectar for inspiring our, and uh, some of the devotees who are out there have decided to have a, a Shastra study Sangam based on our talks and that is very inspiring. Those who are running that Sangha and uh, make it known to others who want to join the course it's better to have small groups and then start maybe start a man's group. The women's have started a group with Nimesha or Lavangya, Sri Devi. Um, the men can also start a little study group amongst themselves. Uh, this would be very inspiring to the spiritual master and to each of the persons that are involved and will take us another step closer in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, my understanding was Lavanya wanted her Prabhu also to be in that group. So we had decided that everybody, God brothers and God sisters can join in. But do you want us to have separate ladies and uh, gents group? No, whatever you decide is fine. I was, I didn't know that it was, uh, I wasn't aware of who was involved in the group. So. Okay, thank you. Just trying to clarify. Thank you so much. Yeah, good. Hare Krishna Maharaj, may I please also request to see how we can join this group of reading? Because obviously we are based in a different part of the world, so... Um, can Mataji, please, can you share the information on if we want to join you, how do we do that? Um, yes, Mataji. Um, uh, I have posted the message in the WhatsApp group. Um, are you in the WhatsApp group, Mataji? No, I am not. I'm really sorry. Could you post it, please, on, on our yes. group, that little group we've created? Yes, Mataji. Yeah, sure. Thank um, you. Nobody responded till now, but... Um, once we get the responses, we are going to start it uh, next week, uh, I'm thinking, Mataji. And uh, I'll send you the details in the email, Mataji. Thank you very much. Highly obliged, Mataji. Look forward to it. We'll post it on the uh, email CMS conference also. So those who are not on the WhatsApp group will also get that information. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not in any of that yet. So oh. I'm, I'm sorry to trouble. <laughs> No, we'll ask, uh, just send your information. We'll ask Radha Bhakti to add you on all the groups. Don't worry. Uh, there is some formality that we are waiting for Mataji at the moment. Hare Krishna, uh, uh, Madhve, it's okay. Nimisha is my mentee, so I will uh, uh, pass it on to her. Oh, thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. This is very inspiring to me to see these groups come up. It shows that their devotees are serious about hearing and chanting and in, in here and learning more about Prabhupada's philosophy and practice. Okay, so we'll end here. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll continue with the same theme. Um, we have finished this particular presentation in three parts, but we will uh, uh, go on to presenting it in another context um, after this. Hi, Krishna. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.